Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at one-sided limits. So up to this point, um, when you've been looking at limits, you've always been looking from both sides at the same time. And both sides had to go to the uh, same y value in order for it to exist. So now let's take a look at this graph here, f of x. So I'm just going to kind of, I think, do this with some examples so you can see what's going on. So here's what a one-sided limit is. We have the limit as x approaches in this case, uh, negative 2, and then notice I'll put a little negative sign up here, okay, of f of x. So how this is read is the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of f of x, okay? So again, this is x approaches negative 2 from the left, that little negative makes it from the left. So what you're doing now, you're only looking at this limit as it's approaching negative 2 from the left, you're ignoring completely the right hand side. So on the graph, x equals negative 2 is right here. So what I'll do is I'll put my finger on my function to the left of negative 2, okay, the left-hand side of it, and I'll bring my finger in here and see, as I approach negative 2, what is the y value approaching? Well, as I get there, it looks like it's approaching 1. So this limit right here is equal to 1. Okay, so that's from the left-hand side. Now I'll go ahead and look from the right-hand side, and for that one, for the notation, you just put a little plus instead of a minus up in the corner there. So this is read the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right of f of x. So again, I'll go to negative 2 and I'll go just to the right of negative 2 and find my function and then I will go ahead and bring my finger in closer to negative 2 and it looks like my y value also happens to be approaching negative 2. So that right hand limit is negative 2. Right there. Now for this question, if I would have asked you, you know, and we could have done this before, To find this, the limit as x approaches just negative 2 of f of x, we've talked about how that means from the left side and the right side. So you have to look from both the left and the right, and we can clearly tell, we've already looked at both of them individually, the left and the right hand limits don't agree with one another. So we know that that limit does not exist. This limit does not exist. And it's, it's true, there's kind of a, a definition of limits, that in order for a limit to exist, the left and right hand limits both have to agree. So meaning that, th therefore, you know, one thing that's kind of an important um, take from that is, say for instance, we just happen to know that there's a, a limit, say as x approaches um, 4 of g of x, and we happen to know that that limit is equal to 7, let's say for instance. Well, if we know that that limit is equal to 7 as x approaches 4, then you know, without even looking at anything else, we know also that the limit as x approaches 4 from the left has to be 7, okay? Because in order for the limit as x approaches 4 of g of x to be 7, the limit from the left and the right have to be the same and agree at 7. And the same thing's true about the limit as x approaches 4 from the right. Without even thinking about it, we already know that that limit's going to be 7. And that actually helps us uh, moving forward a little bit and looking at some other one-sided limit examples when we're talking about um, finding these limits analytically. All right, so we uh, we can look at something like this: the limit as x approaches five from the left of x minus five over x squared minus twenty-five. So prior to this one-sided limit section, we talked about finding limits analytically. Okay, and in doing so, we talked about a few techniques. We looked at um, just plugging in, and that's always the first step you should do, as we'll do in a second here. Uh, we talked about uh, factoring. We talked about rationalizing. We saw some examples with the delta x in there, or h in there. Um, so there's a lot of different things, and I don't want to confuse that. That negative side is not part of the 5. It kind of looks like it might be almost part of the 5 there. Just put it up here a little bit more, maybe, maybe so it's clear, completely different. So the thing is, all of those tricks that we learn still apply to most of our one-sided limit problems. So like in this case, right here, I mean, this looks like a factoring out one. Because if I plug 5 into the top and bottom, I get 0 over 0. So in this case, you know, I can factor this out. I get x minus 5 over x minus 5 times x plus 5. And from here, I can go ahead and I could cancel these out right here. Get 1 over x plus 5. And the cool thing here, 
I just plug five in and I get one ten. So all of that, everything that I just did right there, was the same as if that negative wasn't there at all. And the reason for it is what I just talked about previously is since I was able to go through this whole process and get one tenth, you know, I'm using the method I learned before when I just had the limit as x approaches five. So what I know is that the limit as x approaches five is equal to one tenth. If I know the limit as x approaches five equals one tenth, then I know the limit as x approaches five from the left is also equal to one tenth. So basically, all of those rules apply that we've learned so far, and you just apply them the exact same way, nothing changes whatsoever, okay? when you're talking about a left to right hand limit. Now there are some cases though that are different that we really haven't looked at too much so far, like this for instance. Limit as x approaches four, say from the left, of absolute value of x minus four over x minus four. Now this does not fit into any of those previous techniques. When we plug in four, we get zero over zero, but you know we can't factor, we can't use rationalizing, it's not a delta x one or anything like that. It's not a special trig one or anything. So, let's see here. Um, I think that the good way to, for this is to look at a graph of this. So I'm going to make a little xy table. I want to make sure that my graph is centered around x equals 4. So I'm going to put a 4 in there. Back it up a couple before that. Do a couple after that. So notice that 4 is kind of my center of this. and I chose, So I chose 4 as my center and then I chose a couple x values before it, a couple x values after it. Okay. And so I'm not going to plug these in, so I'm not going to take too long to plug in. You can, if, if you're having a tough time, you can maybe pause it and do that. But if you plug in 2 to this and you work everything out, you get negative 1. If you plug 3 and you also get negative 1. When you plug in 4, you get 0 in the denominator. It's undefined. When you plug in 5, you get 1. When you plug in 6, you also get 1. So if I take a look at this graph, so I just plot these points on a graph right here. So at 2 and 3, it was negative 1, and at 5 and 6, it was positive 1. Now, if I were to go ahead, though, like if I, as I got closer to 2, if I if I'd like use 3.5 on my x values, and I plug 3.5 in, I would still get negative 1. If I plugged in 3.9 in here for x, I would still get negative 1. So this right here is going to continue all the way up until you get to 4. It's going to continue being negative 1. It's just at 4, it's not going to be defined. I might have said until negative 4 a second ago, I'm sorry if I did, I meant 4. And the same thing's true on the other side. If I had chosen something really close to 4, like 4.1, it's still, and plugged it in here, it still would have been 1. So it's going to look like this on the other side. Okay. Basically it's the same thing on the top and bottom. The only difference is this absolute value which might change the sign, you know, so it might make it negative, that's why that's a negative 1. But at 4 it's not defined. So let's see here. Now you can use this graph to help me find this limit. The limit as x approaches 4 from the left. Okay, so let me go to 4, let me go find the function on the left hand side of 4, approach it. The y value looks like it's approaching negative 1. So this limit is just negative 1. Now, you probably don't want to draw the graph out every single time, so what I would suggest is get used to this format. Okay? Just get familiar with it. And thank gosh, if something is like, you know, absolute value of x minus 2 over x minus 2, or absolute value of x plus 7 over x plus 7, or even the absolute value signs can be on the bottom, um, they're all going to be basically the same, and they're all going to have graphs look similar to this, they'll just split off at different points. So in this case, if I were to come to this problem, the way I would do this is I would say, okay, it's, it's x approaching 4 from the left, so values to the left of 4 would be like 3 or 2 or whatever. I know that it's either going to be 1 or negative 1. So if I plug 3 in, I end up getting negative 1, and then my limit's negative 1. Okay. Now if this was just the limit as x approaches 4, and without the negative, so you, that means you have to look from both sides, of course that limit would not exist. Okay. So there's one example of uh, this one-sided limits. I want to look at one more one-sided limit problem. And that's at a piecewise function. Okay. And this is somewhat common to be dealing with a piecewise function when we are looking at uh, limits here. So we'll look at a couple of them. Okay, so let's do the limit as x approaches uh, 1 from the right of f of x. Okay, and probably should have drawn my f of x function first, but it's okay. So we'll say f of x is this function here. It's this piecewise function. We'll say x squared plus 2 and x plus 2. 
This will split off at, at 1. Sorry, at 1, not 0. So again, we have a piecewise function f of x. This function is used for values of x that are less than 1. This function is used for values of x that are greater than 1. And right here, we're looking at the limit as x approaches 1 from the right-hand side of f of x. Okay? So, with piecewise functions, we have talked about the possibilities of what can happen. Essentially, they can either be disjointed, because, you know, one, because the first function leaves off at a certain y value, and the other one picks up at a different one, or they can be together. So the first one leaves off at a y value, and the second one picks up from that same y value. Okay, so you know that can uh, that can happen. Either one can happen. Now, for for a case like this here, obviously, if we're looking, you know, one from the right side, we want to look at x, x approaches one from the right, see what the y value is. Easiest way to do this is just you know whatever value the limit's going to be, it's just going to be the value it leaves off at that point right there. I mean, just plug one in and see what it is. Okay, now. I kind of pointed to this one real quick, and the, why, the reason why I pointed to this one is I'm looking as x approaches 1 from the right. So think from the right. That's values that are bigger than 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. So this portion deals with values of x that are larger than 1. So that's why I chose this one to plug it into. So I plug 1 in here, and it's 3, so therefore this limit is equal to 3. Okay? Pretty straightforward. If I had said, so Let's do another one. If I had said the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of f of x, then I would look, okay, the left is, is uh, values of x that are smaller than 1, 0, negative 1, and so forth. So values of x that are smaller than 1, less than 1, I would use this one for. So I just plug 1 into here, and I end up getting 3. So it happens to be the same in this case. So let's just say, for instance, you were asked to find the limit as x approaches just 1 of f of x. In this case here, you would want to look from both the left and the right. Now, I've already done that in this case, but you could come to a problem that just asked you this, okay? And in that case, you'd have to check both the left and the right. So you plug one into here, one into here, and see what you get. If you get the same number for both, like we do in this case, then you know that that's your limit. If you get a different number for both of them, your limit does not exist. So, just to make sure we're hopefully clear on that, let me show you an example. Let me just change my piecewise function here a little bit. How about instead of x plus 2, I make that x plus 1. Okay? So in that case, if I were to look at the limit as x approaches 1, just 1, let's start with that one, I would have to look from the left side and from the right side. So this is dealing with values that are smaller than 1 or to the left of 1, so I'd plug 1 in here to get 3. Okay, so that's the value from the left side. The value from the right side would be dealt from this one with values of x that are greater than 1. Plug 1 in there, I get 2. So up here I got 3, down here I got 2, I got two different values. So the type of graph we're looking at in that case is something like this, where it, um, you know, the, this, this one right here is going to leave off at a certain value, and this one here is going to pick up from a different y value. So in that case, the limit does not exist. I don't know if equals does not exist, it doesn't exist, but it's okay. You know, and so if we looked at the value, limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of f of x, in this case, this still would have a limit in this case, just from the left side. Okay, so you would still, you just go up to this one here and you look, okay, this is dealing with values that are smaller than 1 to the left of 1. Plug 1 in, you get that's 3. And if you did the limit from the right side, in this case it would be 2. So, you know, I just want to, hopefully that was clear, that, you know, from the left side is dealing with values that are smaller than, from the right side is dealing with values that are larger than. If you just look as x approaches just a number without looking from the left to right, you have to look at both.